Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to 2019. And welcome to a brand new anime season as well. Just like always, I'm going to be looking at four new shows today. I'm going to leave a usual caveat. If it's a series I've not seen before, I'll watch it. If it's a sequel to a series I've not seen, I probably won't. Unless I don't realise it's a sequel, but more about that a bit later. And I'll give you my thoughts about each of the new shows airing as well. Because, and for long-time watchers, you'll know what's coming next. This is the 2019 Winter Anime Preview. From a different perspective. Okay then. So it's the Price of Smiles, is it? I will admit I first read this as a Prince of Smiles and I thought we were going to get another Fujoshi Bait show. And we could still be getting that when we first go into it and see this random blonde haired Prince looking character. But thankfully he's more of a Night Runner Prince. Welcome to a world of Saleo. Well I'm assuming it's called Saleo. The main character, well I think she's the main character, the princess, is Princess Saleo, Princess Yuki Saleo to be precise. And it's her 12th birthday. She's not exactly the most elegant princess, she's a bit cute. But actually that's a lie, she's a lot cute. If you looked up cute in the dictionary, you'd find a definition for cute. But you, you wouldn't find a picture of a girl. But should we though? Should we a picture of her? Just cute. Specifically designed to be cute. Cute. Not incidentally cute, which is the best type of cute. But I digress. It's her 12th birthday and she's getting loads of presents. And by presents I mean she's pressing buttons on people's tablets. And in a huge thought that this could be a mobile game, this anime. But thankfully it's not, as I found out later. But it has all the hallmarks of being one. Maybe just been too many of them recently. It's actually a production by Tatsunoko Productions who make loads of classic shows and loads of very straightforward fighting shows. Definitely not what this one looks like to begin with. Although, we do get some VR mecha action halfway through. I'm all for that. But it looks a bit cute and cuddly and forgetful really. There's nothing really about it which jumps out at me as being memorable. Until about with a halfway point where Yuki starts acting more like a main character and less like a random lolly idol who is there just to sell CDs. Viewer main character Joshua, well, I think there's another main character outside of these two, but we've not met her yet. The real main character Joshua, the princely one, the blonde bombshell pilot guy, ends up getting into a scrap with one of the other knights. In fact, two knights technically, the twins, Yune and Lune. Of course they're called the twins if they're called Yune and Lune. Who in my right mind would name twins anything which don't sound familiar? But regardless, they are cute. If anything, they actually remind me a lot of Tweedledee and Tweedledum from Kiddiegrade. And afterwards, that's the kind of vibe I get from this show. It, it feels a lot like Kiddiegrade did early on. Cute, cuddly, but you can sense there's something else underneath the surface. There's a slightest inkling in my head that this is going to go to war. And we're going to have a cute little Yuki character going to war and sending her minions to death. But not yet. For now, she's just sending her knight off to the border to meet people from another kingdom. I imagine that's where the other characters are going to come in as well. All in all, the first episode of Price of Smiles, it was cute. And it had something underneath the surface that wants to be let out. What it is, I don't know. Should you watch it? Maybe. That's a hint of what the score's going to be. Should you watch it? Maybe. I'm probably going to watch it. I'd probably put it up a higher end of maybe. And if you want to watch it, you can find it over at Crunchyroll. I wasn't sure if I was going to work this one. Boogie Pop and others. Because, you know, the Boogie Pop series, it's been around before. Sort of connected to an older show, which I haven't seen. Come on, it's an older psychological horror. Of course I've not seen it. This is me we're talking about, right? But yeah, Boogie Pop and others. I did a bit of research, and apparently it is actually not a remake. It's not a sequel. It's just... The original night novels being adapted into an anime. The original anime was just an original anime based on the books. Whereas this is actually an adaption of a book, so if you read the books, this is what you were reading. But I've not read the books, I've not seen the original anime, I don't know anything about it except the fact it's a psychological horror, and it involves a character called a Boogie Pop, which sounds weird, makes me think of a Boogie Man. But I don't know if it's a good guy or a bad guy, just the, the Boogie Pop. But we're not actually introduced to the Boogie Pop, we're introduced to. Keiji Takeda, a kid from school who is going out on a date. 
except his date stands him up. Owned finder in cosplay, being attacked by some police officers while she helps a crying deranged man. I have no idea to be honest, uh, makes no sense to me whatsoever. But regardless, this weird hatted person is apparently Boogie Pop. And it turns out that Boogie Pop is actually a split personality of the girl. Um, and we'll be honest, I didn't follow it. This felt to me like a anime aimed at people who have seen the original Boogie Pop anime or have read the original light novels. But it doesn't do much to exp explaining things. I felt a bit lost at times, feeling what's going on. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looked nice and the atmosphere was fantastic. But it just felt like I was being led around being introduced to people I shouldn't know, but I really don't. It's like being the odd one out in a party. In terms of it going on, one of the worries I have about psychological horrors is how it gets so violent and a bit spooky at times. But this was none of that, it just felt slow. And I will be honest about myself half falling asleep halfway through the episode. But thankfully I was woken up by the realisation that Boogie Pop is actually voiced by one of my favourite seiyu, Aoyuki. And I will be honest, the voice she gave her is surreal. It, it's a voice you don't really hear that often from her. And it, I like it. Is it enough to keep me interested in the show? Not sure, to be honest. It depends on how many other good shows there are this season. Should you watch it? Well, answer me these questions. Do you like psychological horror? If yes, watch it. Did you watch the original Boogie Pop? If yes and enjoyed it, watch this. Do you like your anime to have half-naked men prancing around in their underwear? If, if yes, then why the heck are you watching my channel? Get out. You can find Boogie Pop and others over on Crunchyroll. Some time ago, I did a review of a series which was pretty woeful. Well, I do a lot of reviews of shows which are pretty woeful, but not many of them are as woeful as Handshakers was. You may, mem you may remember it. If you do, I'm sorry. Most people have wiped it out of their memory the moment they started watching the bloody thing. And if you did, I don't blame you. Sadly, because I watched the entire first episode for a review, it's stuck in my head. Well, the bouncing is definitely stuck in my head. Definitely. I'll see if I can find the clip of it and post it somewhere. Again. It's kind of hypnotic. But we're bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. I'm getting distracted from this new series called... Um... Called... I don't actually know how to pronounce it. Wiz. Wiz. W apostrophe Z. I'll call it Wiz because, yeah, it, I've no idea how it's pronounced. They don't really dis, uh, pronounce it in the show, and even if they did, it would be pronouncing it in Japanese. But I don't see how Japanese would pronounce something differently than Wiz, given that it's W apostrophe Z. And I, I probably wouldn't have actually reviewed the show had I originally read that it is actually related to Handshakers because. Yep, here we have sort of like a pseudo sequel spin off show thing connected to Handshakers. And oh my life, you can really tell in the first five seconds because just like in Handshakers, the person directing the shots has no real feeling over how you actually shoot a shot. Every five seconds, the camera's either rotating around a CG world or flitting between character and character. You get weird camera angles for random people. People walking in front of a shop for no apparent reason. And then he gets into the main story. And I, I didn't think it'd get any worse. But then they introduced the music. Well, I call it music. Now I know some people are a fan of DJs and the type of music of a DJ's playing. To be fair, a lot of the music that I do, I like, I enjoy. You know, I've got nothing against decent music and decent beats. But these are not, not decent music or decent beats. These are just the same three or four lines just repeated over and over again. The main character scratching his discs on the 
turntable. But I, I'm showing my age now, aren't I? Back in my day, they didn't scratch a records. Scratching a record is how you hurt it. But yeah. Handshakers was woeful. Wiz is starting off as, just as woeful. You got the mysterious world you get to by holding hands with someone. And that in itself, yeah. Don't hold hands with anyone ever. Uh, you'll, you'll both meet with a terrible, terrible fate. It's like truly bull crap you got in handshakers all over again. Now, I am going to watch the episode. Just to warn other people not to watch the episode. If you've got any idiom of sense whatsoever, you saw the description, you saw how it looked, you chose not to. If you didn't, I apologise if you didn't watch it sooner, but don't. Just don't, really. Don't. It's on high dive, but don't. Now we've got a big gripe about the latest series to start airing on high dive this season. It points out how clumsy you are, Miss Ueno. Well, after watching the first episode, I have to give you answers. Not very. She's not falling around, she's not injuring herself, she's not cutting herself. So we're probably talking about how awkward she is. In which case, yeah, she's quite clumsy. But I wouldn't phrase it like that. Fair enough griping out the translation of a title. Welcome to How Clumsy You Are, Miss Ueno. A short anime, or half-length anime, which, uh, yeah, um, which, which, in the first episode, involves drinking piss and upskirting. Drinking piss and upskirting. I'll say that again, just to make it sink in. This is not Pop Team Epic. If anything, this is a bit weirder than Pop Team Epic. Because this is trying to take itself seriously. Well, as seriously can be about this type of show. You see? Ueno is a scientist. She's the president of a science club, actually. And she's got a major, major crush on one of the club members, Tanaka. Except for the fact that Tanaka, well, he isn't listless, he's just indifferent. He shows no real emotion or indication he ever actually understands anything at all. So it's understandable why Ueno is a bit clumsy with herself, with her words and her feelings, because she's trying to confess her feelings to somebody who's got no clue whatsoever. In terms of her piss drinking and the upskirting, those are purely voluntary. She's invented a filter which can convert piss into drinkable water. And she's created a black hole generator. No, that's a that's Steins Gate. She's invented a dark matter generator which can render the contents of one's skirt invisible. You get that mystical starry nothingness you get in video games. Just in real life. In this anime. The anime itself was a bit hyper a bit simplistic, but I can tell there's heart there. I'm not going to say there's depth there, well, except if you're looking up Mr. Wayne's skirt, so that's quite a lot of depth there. And I did generally like that camera angle even in the other arc, where you just see that slight, you see that slight flash of her underskirt, but nothing more. This is a relatively safer work anime about not safer work subjects. If anything, it reminded me a lot of Takagi-san, the teasing anime from a few seasons back. Except it's a lot more crass in its design, but that works for it as well. Takagi-san was meant to look cute and friendly and inviting. This is meant to look manic and sharp edges here and there. As mentioned earlier, this one is airing on high dive. Quite a subdued sort of start for season, I think. Though, to be honest, if I'd known that was a sequel to Handshakers, I probably wouldn't have watched it. Or maybe I would have, just see how bad it was. Join me next time when I look at four more new shows starting this season. So until then, thanks for watching, have a wonderful day, bye bye.